Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The event will start in a few minutes. For us to fully appreciate the event, kindly put your mic on mute until the end of the program. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the unveiling ceremony of the Wall of the Brave. As we commemorate Philippines' 123rd Independence Day, Far Eastern University honors the FEU martyrs, alumni, and school administrators who use their education and formation for the eternal glory of our beloved country. They are unsung heroes who fought for our independence during martial law. To officially begin our program, we will hear a few Recording words in progress. from the man who initiated this patriotic project, FEU President Dr. Michael M. Alba. Whom we are memorialized. Esteemed guests from Bantayog ng Mga Bayani Foundation, led by Ms. Esther Isberto, Attorney Chel Jokno, our keynote speaker, families and friends of the brave FU women and men, whom we are memorializing today and henceforth, members of the FU community, ladies and gentlemen. Far Eastern University is pleased and proud to unveil the Wall of the Brave in honor of the unsung FEU women and men who fought for our freedoms during the dark years of martial law. A permanent exhibit in the university library, the Wall of the Brave features the images and descriptions of 13 FEU students, alumni, and administration officials who joined the struggle against the tyranny and abuses of the autocratic Marcos government and who shed their blood 
in the ultimate sacrifice of their lives to restore the democratic rights and dignity of Filipino citizens and to afford each Filipino the opportunities to make something of themselves. Command thy sons and daughters to battle for the right. Our FEU martyrs took these lyrics of the FEU hymn to heart in alignment with the exhortation our founder, Dr. Nicanor Reyes Sr. gave to the graduating high school class of 1939. Dr. Reyes enunciated, and I quote, we have established in this country a democratic form of government. In a democracy, the circumstance of birth, social position, and heritage of wealth are not the badge of individual worth. Above these are the greater possessions of the individual man, his vision, his leadership, his moral and spiritual vigor. And so our, our response, let the words never again ring in our ears every time we behold this wall of the brave. Let us resolve to never again acquiesce to the trampling of our freedoms by a di dictatorial and despotic government. Let all FEU women and men always endeavor to battle for the right, for their sakes and the well-being of their fellow Filipinos. For helping to plan and hold this event, I wish to thank the Bantayog na mga Bayani Foundation, especially Iting Isberto, who suggested setting up a memorial for our FE heroes and martyrs, the FE University Library, and the FE Publications Office. Thank you also to all who are here in this morning's affair. Happy Independence Day. Mabuhay ang malayang, mamamayang Pilipino. Thank you, Dr. Alba, for your inspiring words. You mentioned that we should endeavor to battle for the right for our sakes and the well-being of our fellow Filipinos. In today's society, where we are constantly challenged to discern what is true and to fight for what is right and just, how do we maintain our integrity? How do we stand for the truth? How can we protect our freedom? Our guest speaker will share his insight on this relevant event and timely topic. He is a human rights lawyer and advocate, educator, and the founding dean of the De La Salle University College of Law. Let us welcome Attorney Jose Manuel Chel Diocno. Hello to all the student leaders, faculty, and administrators of Far Eastern University, the staff from Bantayag ng Mga Bayani, all our guests, and of course the families and relatives of all the FU heroes we are honoring today. Mabuti naman at sa wakas natuloy din tayo nung pang araw ng kagitingan tayo nakaset, but uh, I'm happy that um, somehow or other kahit papano ay natuloy naman. Araw ng kagitingan man o hindi, it's always a good time to look back and to get inspiration from those who have done heroic things. And today is such a good day for us to do that. Kaya sa araw na ito, kinikilala, binibigyan pugay at inaalala natin yung kakaibang kagitingan ni na Antonio Ariado, Crispin Beltran, Romulo Peralta, Juliet Armea, Alfredo Hasul, Ovito Salonga, Monica Atienza, Mary Bernard Jimenez, Alfonso Yuchenko, Maria Lorena Barros, Horacio Morales Jr., at Quintin Yuyitung. These FEU heroes displayed extraordinary courage, selflessness, and love for Filipi fellow Filipinos during one of the darkest periods of our history. Bata pa po ako nung panahon ng martial law, pero hindi ko makakalimutan yung nangyari sa aking ama. Nung uh, gabi ng September 22, biglang may kumatok sa bahay namin, mga sundalo, 
At uh, sinabi nila sa aking ama na inaanyayahan siya na pumunta sa military camp. Yung pala, yung kanilang imbitasyon ay isang imbitasyon na hindi pwedeng tanggihan. That was the last time I saw my father as a free man for the next two years. And I cannot forget those moments when he left our house and was boarded into military vehicles. I cannot forget as well the moments when we would visit him as a detainee or political prisoner during the Marcos time. Pero alam nyo, maswerte pa nga kami na ang father ko. There were many others who were not so lucky. Our family's experience was just one example of what was happening all over the country. Yung uh, pangaabuso, yung pagkawala ng hustisya, yung mga paglabag sa ating karapatang pantao, at yung panggikipit sa ating lahat. Kasabay pa nito, eh, syempre yung mga ninanakawan nilang pera at uh, binabaon pa tayo sa utang. Kung tutusin hanggang ngayon, nararamdaman pa rin natin yung epekto ng martial law, lalong-lalo na yung uh, sa ating justice system. Kasi kung titingnan natin yung ating kasaysayan, yun ang isang bagay na hindi gaanong nabigyan ng uh, diin after the Marcoses left and the dictatorship crumbled. Because one of the biggest effects of the Marcos dictatorship was really how he tainted and poisoned the legal profession and removed and destroyed the independence of our judiciary. We still continue to suffer today from what he has done to our legal system. At uh, alam nyo, itong pagkukulang ng kustisya sa ating bansa, sa palagi ko lang, ito yung pinakamalaking hadlang sa ating pag-asenso. Kasi kung hindi naman maayos yung takbo ng kustisya sa atin, paano yung pananagutan? Paano yung dapat maparasuhan? It's a issue that we all feel because we all know that we lack accountability in our country. We all want to stop corruption. We all want to stop criminal syndicates and all of those kinds of activities. Pero hanggat maayos natin yung ating sistema ng justicia, hindi natin matatapos ang mga problema na yan. Of course, the situation today is a bit different from martial law on the surface. On the surface, we have a working democracy. On the surface, we have independent branches of government. On the surface, we have freedom of expression. Nung panahon na yun, nung, pan nung panahon ng martial law, obvious naman na wala tayong ganon. But below the surface, we see so many parallels between what was happening before and what is happening today. Yung mismong pag-aatake sa mga demokratikong institusyon natin, yung mga chilling effect na nangyayari sa ating pagsasalita ng malaya, yung uh, mga atake din sa mga sa ating mga senador at sa lahat ng mga gustong magsalita lang, gustong magbigay ng kanilang saloobin. That much has not changed despite all the years that, that distance us from martial law. And even issues of corruption, issues of accountability, issues of human rights violations continue to plague us today. Kaya ito yung aking mensahe sa okasyong ito. Hindi pa po tapos yung ipinaglaban ng mga bayani ng FEU. Patuloy natin itrabaho yung ating na dapat gawin para sa mas ligtas, mas patas, at mas makataong Pilipinas. Pinakita ng buhay at halimbawa nila na napakalaki ng papel ng kabataan sa ating lipunan. Actually, sa aking pag-aaral ng ating kasaysayan, kita ko talaga eh, na yung, yung prime movers, yung talagang nagsulong ng pagbabago, yung tunay na pagbabago sa ating minamahal na Pilipinas ay ang kabataan. Panahon pa ni Rizal hanggang ngayon, there is an unbroken line of young people who have been fighting for our dignity, for our freedom, and for our democracy. In fact, my father once said that the brightest pages in the history of our nation have been written with the sweat and the pain the blood and the lives, and the thoughts and the dreams of our youth. At ito yung pinatunayan ng FEU heroes noon. As heirs to their legacy, hinahamang kayo ko kayong patunayan ito muli ngayon. Actually, in our country already belongs to you. More than half of our population are young people. More than half of our registered voters are young people as well. And it's somewhat sad for me to say that 
in, in many ways, my generation has not been able to give you a country where there is justice, to give you a country where there is really a vibrant and healthy democracy. But I know with the energy, with the dedication, with the drive and determination that you have, that you will be able to build a more just and a more humane nation. Because what I've learned in all these years is that you're never too young to know what is right and what is wrong. You're never too young to speak the truth to power. And you're never too young to lead our nation. It's an honor na makasama ko kayong lahat on this occasion. And I hope to see more heroes among your ranks in the years to come. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Attorney Jock, no, for that powerful message. I would like to emphasize some of the things that you said. Our match for a safe, fair, and humane society continues today. A good justice system is needed to protect our freedom, and we urge the youth to fight for our dignity and democracy. As heirs of the legacy of the FEU martyrs, we honor today. Let us do our part in protecting our independence. On behalf of FEU, I would like to present this Certificate of Appreciation to Attorney Chel Diokno. Allow me to read the inscription. This Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Attorney Manuel I. Diokno in grateful recognition and sincere appreciation for sharing his invaluable time insights and contribution as keynote speaker during the unveiling of the exhibit of FEU Martyrs, Wall of the Brave, at the Nicanor Reyes Hall, Far Eastern University, Manila, given this 10th day of June, 2021. Signed, Dr. Maria Guilla G. Gamolo, University Librarian, Dr. Michael M. Alba, President. Thank you again, sir. Now. We move on to the much-awaited part of the event, the unveiling of the Wall of the Brave. FEU considers it both as a responsibility and commitment to educating students and the FEU community about our recent heroes and martyrs, especially those who have graced the university's halls. The FEU library gathered information and installed a permanent FEU exhibit for our unsung heroes. It collaborated with the Bantayog na Mga Bayani Foundation Incorporated, a renowned non-government organization that collects information about the post-World War II martyrs of the country. We recognize the presence of Ms. May V. Rodriguez, Executive Director of Bantayog na Mga Bayani Foundation, who joins us virtually on this special occasion. With your team's help, we were able to identify 13 Tamaraos who will be honored today. FEU Publications designed the photos and panels of our martyrs. The panels are now installed at the oldest structure on campus, Nicanor Reyes Hall. Here, live at FEU, to unveil the Wall of the Brave, our FEU Senior Vice President for Corporate Affairs, Attorney Diana Montinola, University Librarian, Dr. Maria Guilla Gamolo, Former Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs Services, Mr. Joven Castro, and Associate Dean of the Institute of Arts and Sciences, Mr. Mark Isla. Ladies and gentlemen, we present you the FEU Wall of the Brave in three, two, and one. FEU Wall of the Brave features Antonio Ariado, was a member of the National Union of Students of the Philippines and joined rallies against the Marcos-led Philippine government. In 1969, he became an active member of the more militant youth group Kabataang Makabayan, 
and became its chair in Sorsogon. In 1972, Tony and his fellow Bicolano activist leaders were placed in the government's wanted list. He died in an ambush in the middle of a huge military operation. Julieta Cupino Armea was a nursing student in the student involvement of 1970. On October 27, 1983, the Tadtad cult attacked. During the time, Julieta was a head of a group of paramedics. When the Tadtads entered, she and an aide fought to cover those who were retreating. Juliet was captured alive and was tortured by the Tadtads. Monico Nick Tatchensa served as a Secretary General of Kabataang Makabayan from 1968 to 1970. When martial law was declared in 1972, Nick and his group of underground activists systematically organized a network meant to build opposition to the dictatorship and spread the National Democratic Program. Even while in prison, he fought to release women prisoners and seek detainees, demand prisoners' rights, and improve conditions. Maria Lorena M. Barros remains today as one of the most well-known heroes of the anti-dictatorship struggle. She was a charismatic leader, gifted writer, icon of modern Philippine feminism, and the gentle warrior who defiantly confronted death at the hands of government soldiers deep in the forest of the Sierra Madre. Crispin K. Bell Beltran quietly but firmly helped reshape the local labor movement into a force that would contribute to opposing the dictatorship. With the notably charismatic Felixberto Olalia Sr., they established the Pilusang Mayo Uno in 1980. Bonifacio H. Gilliego was a congressman who championed a radical land reform program of zero retention and rallied against human rights abuses, especially by the military. He became a secret godfather of the underground opposition forces. Armed with diligent and scholarly research on historical facts and sworn statements of surviving U.S.-recognized guerrillas, Gilliego completed his article on the Marcos fake medals. Alfredo V. Hasul became an activist during the late 1960s and 1970s when the student movement for nationalism and democracy raged in most schools in Metro Manila. Alfredo was then a student at FEU, taking up AD in political science. Alfredo joined the Kabataang Makabayan in 1970, where he took to heart two principles, learn from the people and serve the people. Sister Mary Bernard Jimenez was one of the earliest volunteers to work at Task Force Detainees of the Philippines, or TFDP, a program organized in 1974 by the Association of Major Religious Superiors of the Philippines. She gave special attention to prisoners who had few or no visitors. She tirelessly worked for the release papers doing the rounds of the military and defense ministry offices. Horacio Boy Morales Jr. was a man with a mission. He helped found the Development Academy of the Philippines, or DAP, and was its, its executive vice president from 1973 to 1977. In 1975, he joined the National Democratic Front while still in government. His DAP office coordinate people's organizations and cooperatives in the rural areas. In, on December 1977, the day he was to receive the TOYM award, he announced that he was joining the underground to fight the ruling system that had brought 
so much suffering and misery to the bored masses of the people. Romulo Romy Peralta was a committed student activist during the first quarter storm of 1970 and later joined the National Democratic Movement. He was the founder and first editor of the Solidaridad Newsletter, an international publication on the Philippine Human Rights Movement. He was also the first Executive Secretary for Development and Human Rights at the Asia Alliance of Young Men's Christian Association, or YMCA. Jovito R. Salonga was the Dean of the College of Law of Far Eastern University from 1956 to 1961. He exposed several irregularities in the Marcos administration, earning him the media tag as the nation's fiscalizer. He was appointed chair of the Presidential Commission on Good Governance during the Corazon Aquino administration. He became a senator and eventually Senate president during his third term, when he was remembered most for his decision in September 1991 to reject a new Philippine-US basis treaty. Alfonso T. Yuchenko gave his wholehearted support to the people's opposition to the Marcos dictatorship as open resistance was, was building up in the Philippine urban areas towards the late 1970s. His quiet involvement in the form of valuable moral and material assistance gave hope in particular to those, who, to those oppositionists in the light fire movement. Kintin G. Yu Yitung reopened the Chinese commercial news in 1945 and built it up to become the most widely circulated Chinese language newspaper in the Philippines, respected for its independent positions and coverage of the news. It was fearless in reporting the news as it happened, covering the accounts of fraud that marked President Marcos re-election in 1969, and the series of protest actions of the first quarter storm. He also denounced the Marcos dictatorship and its suppression of press freedom during an annual convention of the International Press Institute held in Jerusalem. We salute all our FEU heroes. May their stories of bravery and morality inspire the next generation of Tamaraos to continue safeguarding our country's freedom. Now, we cap off our event with the closing remarks from the key proponent of this whole initiative, University Librarian, Dr. Maria Gia Gamolo. To FEU President, Dr. Michael M. Alba, the Vice President for Corporate Affairs, Attorney Gianna Montinola, to the Vice President for Academic Services, Dr. Jean Pamitan, to the Director of the Alumni Office, Mr. Selmer Santos, to faculty, students, and fellow Tamaraos, good morning to all. It took the FEU family two years to realize this permanent FEU wall of the brain, and it is all worth it. It is also intended another permanent thing, that of building up a permanent network of librarians, teaming up with civil society organizations, to acclaim these brave FEU students and alumni who fought for freedom, struggling against the darkness that is martial law. Thank you to Attorney Shell Jokno, who took time off from his busy schedule to join us today as guest speaker. 
We specifically take the Bantayog ng mga Bayani Foundation Incorporated and its Executive Director, Ms. May V. Rodriguez, who provided the basic information on the brave young men and women whose pictures are on permanent exhibit now on our wall. We thank the families of the brave for accepting our invitation to join us today and remember for a short time their beloved sacrifices. Katulad ninyo, hindi po namin sila makakalimutan. We thank also President Michael Alba who thought of this inspiring idea of building an FEU wall of the brave. Dr. Rowena Reyes, the Dean of Institute of Arts and Sciences, Mr. Joven Castro, the library's former boss, and Dr. Jean Pamitan, our Vice President for Academic Services, who has been supportive of this endeavor from the start. The FEU Corporate Affairs Office that prepared all the needed collaterals like posters and designed the program. FTU library staff who formed committees to implement all the necessary tasks to ensure the success of this event. Above all, we thank God Almighty for finally allowing us to push through this event. Even with so many man-made problems that deterred us for two years, as always, to God and country, all be the glory. Finally, we thank you all who participated in this event and witnessed the unveiling of the FEU's Martyrs Wall of the Brave. God bless you and mabuhay po sa inyong lahat. Thank you, Ma'am Gia. And that concludes today's program. Once the pandemic ends and we all go back to campus, we invite you to view the Wall of the Brave here at the Nicanor Reyes Hall Lobby. This has been your host, Shermarie Bautista. Thank you and happy Independence Day to all.